about a month ago, we announced a new generation of cameras. And besides a 4K PTZ, the CP63, we also now have the CF83 fisheye. Now, for a bit of a historical uh, context, uh, you might be thinking that this is the third generation series camera. We're actually on the fourth one because when Vercada first launched, we used to have the D-series that among the models had the D80, which is the first fisheye we've done. Ever since then, we iterated once by releasing the CF81. However, for the last few years, we did not get a refresh when it comes to the fisheyes. And a fisheye camera is great. You can put it on a ceiling, you can put it on a wall, and it kind of gives you a nice view of the entire area without forcing you to deploy multiple cameras, thus saving cost when it comes to cabling. The fisheye is an interesting camera because it does have 12 megapixels, but remember those are spread around the entire field of view. So in all honesty, if you really want details at a distance, you're better off looking at the multi-sensor or the PTZ. There are a few big differences between this and the previous model. First of all, it comes with the latest and greatest Umbrella chipsets that will allow us in the future to build even more functionality on the edge. In addition, although the sensor is still 12 megapixels, we did a lot of work in correcting the distortions at the edges, which are common with these types of cameras. And the image sensor in itself is larger, meaning that more light comes in. So I'm expecting this to stay in day mode longer and to have better performance at night. So let's see what's in the box. We have the fisheye itself, which as you might notice, it's slightly thicker than the previous model with the mounting plate included. And the first thing I notice is that you actually have a bubble level on it. So with the new generation cameras, we've done a lot of improvements when it comes to the install experience to make sure that it's much easier and faster to put these up. We also get an install kit with uh, some screws and the now well-known uh, Torx screwdriver. That's actually the only thing that you will need to put this camera together. The first thing you'll notice is that it does come with a basic pack, but remember to remove this when you install it. Um, this is more for transport and storage purposes. Um, the camera itself is sealed, so there is no way that moisture can get into it. Secondly, with the previous generation cameras, you needed to put the grommet on top of the cable and then fasten the nut to make sure that it, there's no leaks. But we now have an improved latching design to make it much easier. And to be honest, I'll be up on a ladder soon. And I do remember once or twice really struggling to seal this camera because the cable wasn't actually coming in straight. We now have a physical button to toggle audio recording on and off. This is more for privacy minded people who want to make sure that there is no way somebody actually turned this on via software. And you also now have three LEDs that will make it easy for you to troubleshoot without putting the case back on and seeing what the status LED does. So this is broken down into LAN and WAN issues. And all you need to do is count the number of flashes and refer to our documentation to understand what's wrong and why the camera does not come up online. Last but not least, I wanted to emphasize that with the new cameras, we also have new mounts. So this camera won't be able to use the angle mount I currently have outside, although the actual hole patterns are the same. So I'm expecting the swap to be as easy as possible. The new mounts are very slick because not only you get a printed indication of the whole pattern, but also you can align it properly uh, due to the bubble. We launched a couple more exciting mounts, including the a circular junction box, which has been requested previously in the past, and also a pendant cap that is thicker and protects the cameras from raindrops and snow accumulation. So next step, is to plug this in into a switch in this room just to make sure that the camera is up and running and is associated to my command. Then I'll go and I'll swap the old camera in front of my house and do a bit of testing and see how the new one performs.
Well, it took me just less than 15 minutes to replace my old CF81 with the new CF83 and I have to tell you, uh, the process was very, very smooth, even for a person like me who uses proverbially two uh, left hands. So if you are an experienced installer and you have done this many times and you have the right tools, etc., then you should be up and running in 10 minutes or so. I really enjoyed the, the small improvements that made my life easier from the fact that I just needed the Torx screwdriver to do all my work once the actual mount was on the wall. The fact that I didn't have to drill new holes and could use the old ones and just sealing the camera was so much easier. The grommet that was supplied with the camera fit but remember that inside the box you have a bigger one in case your cable is too thick. Last but not least, being able to check the status of the camera before screwing the top back on was very useful because it saved a lot of time in case, for example, the cable would have malfunctioned. Now, you don't have to trust me, Vercada does offer free trials, so I do suggest that you get one and try it for yourself. But before I finish this video, I also wanted to point out some of the differences when it comes to the image because in itself we still have 12 megapixels so you should be expecting the same performance when it comes to the distance that people get picked up and when face search kicks in however one noticeable improvement from the original picture that you kind of see here with me waving from just behind this bush is that you'll be able to capture more of the image. If I actually refer to those uh, images side by side, again, I do apologize that the old camera is already shut down, but you'll actually see that the camera now captures a wider image without showing the distortions at the edges that are common with these types of cameras. There is a slight difference in color hues now, this is an autumn day in the UK, so to be honest, probably the new one is slightly more realistic when it comes to how things look like. But overall, I was not just impressed with how easy the install was, but that now I'll get an even larger area covered by the camera itself. 